All righty, folks, it is time for the Friday financial wrap up, and we have a treat. <laughs> Live and in person together, we are here at the One Rental at a Time Mansion in <laughs> Las Vegas, Nevada. And so, um, I think, how do I start it off? I always say, uh, Hey, uh, what do I say? I say, welcome to the Friday Financial Wrap-Up. We're back for another Friday Financial Wrap-Up financial wrap with Mr. Michael Zuber. How are you, Michael? I'm doing well, man. It was fun to watch you be flustered for a minute. That was good. That's tongue-tied, man. I'm a little, I'm a little starstruck. I, hanging out with Olivia, hanging out with Michael. We're here live. I'm actually here in the studio, as you can see. A little different, right? Because we normally do it on Zoom. But let's get into it. This is for April the 19th. 19th. 2024. I don't even know the date, what date it is. That's how starstruck I am today. So let's get right into it. Housing starts. What did you see this week? Yeah. So once a month, we get to understand what's going on in the housing market from kind of the builder's perspective, right? Um, we do get a number that's called housing starts, but we have to understand that housing starts as it's calculated and reported includes single family homes, yeah. small multis, and five units and above. Yeah. So when you hear the doomers talking about the housing starts being down 15 or 14.7 percent, you need to realize that we have to scratch that dig a little deeper. So, yes, housing starts were down 14.7 percent. Multifamily, the big stuff, was down 20.8 percent. So definitely leaning multifamily. But let's also talk about single family. Single family was undoubtedly down as well. But folks, rates are going up. Wouldn't one hope that we stop building McMansions and the big stuff? And oh, by the way, maybe we can start focusing on building smaller homes. So again, just because housing starts are down 14.7%, our multifamily is down 20.8%, it doesn't mean the world is ending. In fact, it means that builders are rotating what is being developed and maybe, hopefully, knock on wood, cross your fingers, building smaller homes. We shall see in the near future. But yeah, that was housing starts. It's interesting because you always say rates matter, it's right? Matter. And that's right. I mean, that's right there. It just shows. Let's go into the next topic, which is existing home sales. I know this was a really big deal. What did you see this week? What was the number? And tell us more about it. Yeah, existing home sales is, you know, basically stuff uh, in the MLS, right? This is inventory that has been owned by someone. It's not a new build. Uh, and let's remind what happened last month. Last month was a barn burner. Last month was expected to be under four and came in at 4.38 million. In fact, we were the only channel or only folks to get it right last month. We were we were really, really close to that number. Um, so again, last month, 4.38. The experts were calling 4.17. I called 4.25. Uh, it actually came in at 4.19. So this month, again, splitting hairs, I will give it to the experts. They were more right, although slightly low, and I was off. But here's the deal. What happened? We are down 4.3% month on month. Folks, guess what? Rates matter. Yep. There we go. Yeah. So, and it's interesting too. We talked about this this morning. We talked about it last night. And that even if we look forward, right, because we're looking at March's numbers, correct? Mm -hmm. What you just went through. Mm -hmm. So if we look at April and based on what rates are now, um, probably can expect this to be a trend, right? For existing home sales to be soft and potentially. Yeah, here's a really wild call for you. I don't think I haven't said this out loud, but I've been thinking about it for months. I have a sneaky suspicion that 4.38, which was the February print, might be the high number for the year. Interesting. That's how much rates matter. Interesting. Interesting. So speaking of rates, Jerome Powell, Fed, what did you see this week? What are your thoughts? What were the top uh, points? Again, you know, we had a we had hot hot inflation last week. R rates went up. Uh, as I shared uh, on Sunday, we had twelve Fed speeches this week, with Tuesday being the big one from Jerome Powell. And Jerome Powell basically said, "Folks, you're not listening to me." Higher for longer. Yeah. He said things like, maybe we don't cut this year. You know, maybe it's later. Maybe, you know, inflation's a problem. You know, all of these things. And, you know, that caused the market to kind of shake and shiver. Um, you know, we saw interest rates on mortgages do what they did, the 10-year note. And Jerome Powell has, has been remarkably consistent. Yeah. 
and the market's just figuring that out. So again, I think Jerome Powell's made it really clear. Uh, I think I said this last week for the first time on the, the weekly wrap up. I am now calling November for the first rate cut, giving up on July. I can't see May. I can't see June. And I got to tell you, folks, I can't see July either. I personally think there's no chance they cut in September the first time. So the first rate cut November. And you know what? There's actually a lot of people talking about December being the first rate cut. So yeah, that's where we are. So the rate cuts, you've been talking about it, higher for longer, higher for longer. Obviously, Jerome Powell just re-echoed that. And it's something to be planning into your next acquisition, your next flip, your next project. Um, let's keep going. Let's talk about mortgage rates specifically. What were they this week in eight months? Mortgage rates uh, hit, hit seven and a half. That's owner OCK best credit. So investors, you're in the eights again. Yep. And there's a lot of people talking about rates going in the sixes and doing all of that. So uh, I think we've learned higher for longer means it. I think we're giving up on that. If you like it, lock it. Uh, something I heard from Convoy Home Loans this week, specifically, Jonathan, DSCR loans. Yep are lower than conventional. So folks, if you are an investor and maybe you know you depreciate or you have a lot of write-offs or whatever, DSCR loans are remarkably close, if not yeah. below conventional, which doesn't usually happen. <laughs> usually they're higher. Usually they're a half a point, three quarter point higher. Tell, tell for a few people, they may not know what DSCR is. Tell them what that is. Yeah, DSCR simply stands for debt service coverage ratio. It basically means the asset itself covers the loan as opposed to your credit or, you know, things of that nature. So DSCR loans um, are used by investors, especially if you're self-employed, you know, maybe you're retired. Uh, it's asset-based uh, lending. So uh, just another way to get loans done. 25% down, 20, 30% down? 25. 25%. 25. Okay. Pretty normal. And I know a lot of you know that, but I just want to re-echo. I know there's one of you out there, a new person. Welcome to the channel. By the way, if you like the content here, subscribe like share follow please thank you we appreciate let's keep going so good news bad news what what's that i what, what's that note i didn't catch that <laughs> so rates going higher naturally i think most of us recoil and think bad news if you happen to be shopping right now and you're in a loan and you didn't lock it it's bad news in fact i'm hearing from real estate agents that folks that didn't lock the rate move has been so violent some people are canceling Yep. You know, especially if you're in California where the home prices are, you know, over half a million bucks, a, a half a point rate is a is a real payment shock. Yep. Um, so, again, if you're in the moment, it's clearly bad news. But if you're in my camp and you're hoping that the housing market heals itself. You need higher rates because I think we have learned and I think we have actual evidence when rates go below seven, bad stuff happens. Demand picks up, supply's not there. You get crazy bidding wars. Beth Traversal talked about a, a property she had that was $150,000 over list price. Dude, that's not normal. That's not okay. But that's what happens when you have marginal demand unlocked. So yeah. as somebody who hopes for a housing market that eventually gets back to normal, higher rates are the way to do that. So from where I sit, you know, if you, if you take yourself out of the moment, it's good news. Also, something I have learned over 20, gosh, three years now. If you are a buyer, the best way to get deals is from motivated sellers. Yep. Let me say it differently in case you don't know what that means. In a housing market, you have want to sellers and you have need to sellers. What's the difference? A want to seller will leave something on the market and eventually take it off because they didn't get their price. A need to sell needs to sell. Price be damned, terms be damned. So again, if you're a need to seller in a market that is rising rates and the property is not perfect, it's got its issues, you can't fix stuff. Oh, by the way, it won't go conventional. Uh, you need to sell and it means you're going to take a lower price or you're going to take terms yep. or both. So again, as an investor who's in acquisition mode, who's trying to buy, who's launching a new market, who's doing a show called Buying Vegas, I selfishly think higher rates will slow a housing market fact. And in a slower market, I can get more creative and I have more time. So I think higher rates are good news. Uh, I understand a lot of people are going to hate me for saying that. It's not going to change my opinion. I think it is good news because it will help heal the market and 
it will make it easier for me and others to find need to sell. Very good. So strong. Again, in the short term, people get worried. They're nervous. Oh my God, rates are seven and a half, whatever the case may be. But actually, if you are patient and you are doing your diligence, the buy box, doing the work, you're really studying your market, this just means better opportunity. And really down the road, tell the story about the realtor and being second in the offer, like in a yeah. bidding in that scenario. And I think that was good. He shared this last night at the meetup. And I thought it was probably one of the best things that I had heard, you know, like at, at a meetup mm -hmm. that's practical that everybody can take action on, please. Yeah. So one of the things that we talked about at the meetup, shout out um, uh, Chino. Chino for putting together the sub yep. two uh, community pace and all that. But one of the things that I want people to realize is some of the best deals I've gotten is not being first. So what does that mean? Well, in, in a competitive situation, you obviously have a winner and then there will be somebody in second position or somebody who didn't get it. I like that because I don't like I don't like overpaying. I don't like bidding wars. I don't get in them, but I like being second. Why do I like being second? Because I understand the power of follow up. Right. This is what happens in real estate cycles of all cycles. Yep. They declare a winner. Escrow gets open. Inspections happen. Appraisals happen. Sometimes sellers get cold feet. Sometimes inspections come back. Whatever. Deals fall apart all the time. But what I start doing is every two weeks on properties that I want, I follow up with the listing agent. And I say, yeah, hey, my name is Michael Zuber. I've been on that property. I didn't get it. I just wanted to let you know I'm a real buyer. I'm still here. The first two weeks, nothing has happened. So they're like, no, it, they always say it's a solid deal. Don't bother me. I follow up in another two weeks. Hey, because again, I will follow up until it closes or goes active. But basically what I'm looking for is I'm finding that agent We've got a troubled listing and who's trying to trying to hold it together because what will often happen i find real estate agents who open escrows they start spending their commission before they get it and trust me if you're spending your commission before you get it and the deal falls apart you are highly motivated to kind of hold that thing together and if you're following up and you are that person like me who's a real buyer who will stay with their numbers you can be a lifeline for that transaction. And guess what really happens if you do it right? That property never goes back on the MLS. You're not competing with anybody. You are the only answer. You have a seller that's ready to move on. You have an agent who's already spent their commission and you're the lifesaver. You stay on your number. And sometimes if I'm really in a dickish mood, I'll lower my number five grand. It's okay. I'm the only, I have no competition. Now, again, this doesn't always work. It works about 15 to 20% of the time, but that's 15 to 20% of the time of deals that I get my number with no competition. So good. So good. And again, the key is in the consistency and in the follow-up. It's checking back because again, that deal is not going to qualify for conforming financing. And there's always going to be things that come up in appraisals, inspections, and just little things that are going to blow the deal up to be ready to pounce on it. So good, Michael. I appreciate it. Tell them about the Zuber letter. What yeah. is it and what are you doing there? Yeah, the Zuber letter is something that I've always dreamed about doing. A Zuber letter, again, is like, it is a newsletter. It comes to you in your email. I've had a, always wanted to consolidate what's going on in YouTube, going on in Instagram, very visual into a newsletter. It's never been possible for me. If you've ever seen me write an email or send something out, misspelled words. It's horrible. Uh, I've written two books, but it's real work. It's tiring. It's effort. I'm not good at it. Uh, but lucky enough, I've worked with Lance Lambert now for a couple of years. He is obviously a true author, a true writer. That is his job. He's written for Fortune and many other magazines. He started his own thing called Resi Club, which is awesome. Yep. And he's like, hey, why don't we merge our passions? You do your thing on video. I'll watch it. I'll take one, one thread a week. We will draft a newsletter together. Uh, he'll include stuff from Resi Club, and it will just become the go-to place for real estate investors, home buyers, agents. And uh, the first one, after three weeks of beating out together, we have a template that we're both proud of. It went out yesterday. I'm so happy for it. If you want to get upcoming episodes or upcoming newsletters, let's go to zuberletter.com, zuberletter.com, zuberletter.com. I created a URL just for it. Get your email, and it will come. We're aiming for one a week. Um, First, the first version, the first newsletter was awesome. So happy to get it. So um, thank you. If you got it, if you haven't, zuberletter.com. And it's free. Hey, free. Free. All you got to do is just go sign up for it. It's a great weekly, weekly newsletter. 
weekly newsletter, folks, subscribe, zuberletter.com. And then also, too, I want to just share, if you're watching this, obviously, Friday, um, you're going to be speaking at Ryan Pineda's on Saturday. Yep. Ace Morby's going to be there, Ryan Pineda, a bunch of all-stars. Michael's on stage as well. If you were at the WealthCon here in Las Vegas this weekend, please come up, say hi to Michael, to myself. Come up, let's interact. Maybe let's do a little small piece, a 30-second reel yeah. together. Let's let's make sure to connect. Michael, any closing words? No, folks, at the end of the day, uh, just keep, don't be scared. Housing, slower housing market is a good thing. We've needed a slower yeah. market for a while, um, and we're here. So uh, I'm excited. I want you to be excited. It doesn't give you permission to skip the line. It doesn't give you permission to not do the work. Keep networking. Two people, uh, two people a week. Writing offers. Understanding your numbers. Doing the work. This is the this is the market where doing the work pays off. That's it, folks. Do the work. Have a great weekend. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. If you like, comment, subscribe, follow. Thank you.